Th thanks, David. Okay, um, so really quick little one to start with is, is all about Q-Field. Now, um, has anybody sort of heard what Q-Field actually is? Okay, so there's a handful. Okay, so Qfield is essentially uh, an, a mobile application based on QGIS running on Android devices. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at um, how we actually use Qfield and what sort of the processes are, and I'll, I'll tell you a few gotchas and how to work around them, uh, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so um, Qfield, where, where does it kind of fit in a typical sort of FOS4G stack? Um, so this is sort of the stack that I would work with generally, which is sort of QField, QGIS down at the bottom end where you're doing your maintenance data capture, all that kind of stuff, um, through PostGIS, GeoServer, GeoNode, MapStore for you know, end user requirements. So of course, um, QField is right at the beginning of that stack, it's right there at the base. Okay, um, so the, the whole idea with QField is that you, you prepare once, deploy anywhere. Okay. Uh, works with QGIS projects, which is great. You know, you've got that, uh, you, you, if you can build a QGIS project, you can actually go out and use QField. Right. Uh, pretty much supports most QGIS supported formats. I haven't struck too many issues yet with, with any weird sort of formats. Uh, and of course it has some synchronization capabilities and those are getting better all the time. Um, typically, you know, because you're <laughs> gonna be on an Android device, you want something that is gonna be touch friendly, okay, so things like your um, interface uh, built with uh, large buttons, um, there's not too many of them, uh, it's obviously GPS centric, okay, and in this case especially, it's going to listen natively to those Android location services, okay. Um, it will work with um, other location services as well, I was working with a, a survey company down in the South Island about a month or so back and they were using it to link back to their Trimble gear. All right, so they're getting nice, accurate um, GPS recordings. Um, so it, it really works in sort of a, a modal type way. It sort of has these switchable working modes to display, do inspections, do some digitizing, do some measuring. Right. Uh, so two things that really you need. Um, obviously there's a little plugin in QGIS that allows you to do the synchronization. Yes, makes it easy. Okay, and obviously out in the field you need an Android device. Now, you don't need anything too highly spec, to be honest. Um, I had a sort of mid-range Samsung Tab A, you know, they're around about $400 odd dollars, and it worked absolutely perfectly on that. Okay, so you don't have to go and spend a fortune on your device. Workflow. Um, essentially, it, it's sort of that typical sort of pre-field work, field work, post-field work type workflow, okay? Um, once you've got your project set up and you've done your little bit of your pre-field work, out in the field, collecting some data, come back in, synchronise back, do your QA, whatever you're going to do. Okay, so let's step through some of that. Um, pre-field work, obviously the first thing you want to do is actually prepare yourself a QGIS project. Okay, so there's a couple of key things in there. Obviously there's the layers and the styles, um, but one of the other key things is that any layer that you're wanting to do some editing on, you actually want to um, build uh, into that the widgets in the edit forms, all right? So that's the things like your calendar drop downs and you know, your, your drop downs and all that kind of stuff. If you get those sorted right there at the project level, it makes life easier later on. Okay. Um, the other thing that's really useful is snapping because that will flow through into the QField interface, okay? So if you set the snapping correctly in your QGIS project, it all flows through. Right, the uh, QField Sync plugin. Um, now this is where uh, it really does make things a little bit easy. There's one gotcha though, and that's uh, for your particular project under the preferences, you wanna make sure that any of those layers that you're making editable, uh, you wanna set them to offline editing in that preference mode. That's the one thing that tends to sort of trip people up when they first get into using QField. Okay. <coughs> Uh, out in the field, you actually have your uh, QField interface. Uh, it's nice and simple, has all those basic things you need like layer control, uh, zooming in and out, you know, it's all touch, you know, so that's, that's cool. It has some full text search capability across all of the layers that are in your uh, particular project, not just specific layers. You can actually, you know, do a road search, do an ID search, whatever it happens to be. 
Uh, it has really seamless digitizing experience. Okay, so in other words, as we're um, digitizing lines, polygons, whatever, um, it's going to work with your GPS capability, uh, and it will have running uh, coordinates uh, there um, beside your, your cursor, uh, as well as a running distance if you're doing line work and that sort of thing. Uh, all of the um, stuff that you've defined in your edit widgets comes through in that right-hand side panel. Um, so if you've got drop-downs or date calendars, they all you know, will flow through. <clears throat> okay, post field work. Um, so the only thing I found that really tripped me up with uh, synchronising back to a QGIS project was when you start off um, doing that sync, make sure you haven't actually opened up the project initially. Okay, so in other words, you've got a blank QGIS, hit your um, sync, the sync will actually take care of opening up the project for you. Okay, so that's the other gotcha. Um, okay. <clears throat> Once you get to that point, um, you can undertake your normal QA processing that you would do for any of your data. Hopefully you are all doing some sort of QA. Excellent. Okay. Um, and that, that's really about it. Q, Q field is extremely simple to get into. It's, you know, have a go. If you can build a project in QGIS, you can go out and use Q field. Okay. So that, that's sort of me at this point in time. So I will take some questions now. That, that's sort of a younger version of me, about 35 years ago. Um, <laughs> and when I used to actually do some real work. But um, So I'll take some questions now. And then if you're real keen, I'll give you an update on some tracking, some GPS tracking I've done on a cat that we have at home. <laughs> if you're real keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Question that no Function for the field worker to track their walking path, like just to, you know. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay, so not. Edit just walk edit. Not directly, but having said that, um, you could set yourself up an edit layer um, and then obviously set that going as a di digitizing type function. Yep, so yeah, yeah, and you can work around it. Can, can you have it set up so you've got a layer that gives you live sort of um, web, web, web services, uh, like OpenStreetMaps or some aerial Im imagery or whatever? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so uh, the release I was testing, no. Okay. Um, subsequent release that um, has only just sort of come out, yes. Okay. So, um, and there's more to come with that. Okay. So. Um, that's definitely the way they're progressing with it, so that you can not just do um, disconnected data capture, you can go and do, you know, you know, in a connected environment as well. Mm. And my question was related to using uh, WEXT. Yep. So. Yeah. So same, same thing applies. So um, not there in the, you know, in, in what I was doing, but it's definitely in the, on the cards. It's part of their program to actually build that in. Cool, let's just quickly switch. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Um, so back in about 2017, we had this lovely little cat. His, his name's Storm. He's a little grey thing. And he disappeared for about four days. And of course, Tanya, my wife, says, where the hell's that cat gone? I'm really angry with him. And of course, he ro rocks up sort of four days later with a mouse and says, hey, I'm back. Here's your mouse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyway, we, we sort of thought, right, we, we kind of want to know where this cat goes because if he does go missing, at least we can know where to kind of go and look for him, right? So over a, a, a sort of, uh, I, I managed to find online uh, through a company called Paw Track in, in the UK, Paw Track, great name, eh? Um, he, and and this, this little um, GPS device arrived, it was about $300 odd dollars um, and it worked with uh, a 3G connection, it picked up GPS signals. Once you got within sort of range of the house, it would pick up your Wi-Fi um, and stop you know, recording GPS, because um, who needs GPS points all around your house? Um, and um, it was actually really, really good. It had some really good settings. Um, but one of the major failings with that whole setup was they didn't provide you with the raw data. Okay. Um, they gave you a lovely website um, where you could visualize the stuff, but 
Um, all I saw was points, and I wanted to know lines, directions, I wanted to know territory, all those sorts of lovely things. So, of course, being in this sort of a, a, you know, industry, what do you do? You go and hack the site and you see if there's any data there. <laughs> right. So I found this lovely big pile of JSON data sitting in the website, and I thought, yep, I can use that because it had everything I needed. Um, so I pulled that out, um, pushed it into PostGIS, yep. Wrote a couple of really nice little views that actually, you know, joined the dots up, made some, you know, line work for me, and gave me some territory polygons and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, so that was back in uh, 2017. Now, of course, latest versions of QGIS now have some 3D capability. So I thought, oh, this would be pretty cool. Let's actually have a look and see what this actually looks like on a 3D surface. Okay, so what you're looking at there is um, a little um, area just above Napier, which is called Bayview, which is where we live. We've got a little two-acre lifestyle block, so it's quite rural. Um, and it's quite steep in places, okay. Um, so it's not your average run-of-the-mill farmland. It's sort of, you know, it's not this sort of flat stuff. It's like, <laughs> like this. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what we've actually got in, in here in 3D. Um, well, first thing of all, all we do is we put some building polygons in, right? So here we go, we've got some uh, building polygons which I've then extruded out. Okay. Um, pretty straightforward to do in uh, QGIS. Um, we now have a lovely um, 3D capability option against each layer, and we can do things like extrusions based on static values or obviously from data within our, 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 um, our data sets. And in this case, I've got the, <coughs> the buildings clamping to the terrain. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so far so good. Okay, so let's actually have a look at all the, uh, the points that Storm recorded. So this is over a 12 hour period, and each point is um, recorded every six minutes. I did six minutes because it seemed to be the best battery life I, I could get out of the unit. Okay, cool. So what you start to see is all these little purple points. Okay, now we knew he went down this part of the valley. Now our, our place is just sitting right in here. We had no idea he went round this hill, okay? And he went for miles, like, you know, and right down uh, over the back of the hill into a vineyard, okay? <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe he likes wine, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, um, so, so that's sort of the raw result that you get from, you know, that, that JSON data that was coming out of the website. Okay, so um, one of the views we obviously built is some line segments to actually show, you know, where he went and, and obviously direction. Okay, so well, that's just a post just view that says, right, um, you know, ordered dates, uh, here's your start point, end point of the line, makes me some segments. Okay, so I've got that nicely um, sh uh, styled up with some arrows, um, and, you know, that's, that's actually really nice and easy to do in QGIS nowadays. It used to be a little bit harder. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice, simple thing to do. Okay, so I've only got a couple of minutes left, so we'll rush through this. Um, you will find that there's places he just doesn't go near. All right, so some houses up here, there's a house here. Down below us, towards the road, there's, there's a whole bunch of houses he doesn't go near, right? And strangely enough, that's where all the dogs live. <laughs> okay, so that, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, so um, the interesting thing about uh, this latest um, 3D stuff is um, we can actually bring in 3D models. Um, yeah, so I just did a quick search on the web. You know, find me a, a free QGIS, uh, sorry, a free 3D model of a Labrador, right? So yep, yep. So it's first thing that comes up is 3D models for free dot com or something like that. And of course, I find myself a little uh, uh, Labrador that I can throw in there. And if we have a look at the uh, the style there you can see it's using a 3D model, and I'm just pointing to the actual object file that I've downloaded, uh, clamped it to ter the terrain, and then I've got some options for how I scale and rotate it and do various things. Okay. So um, that's kind of where we're at at this point, and so hopefully at some point we might be able to strap a GoPro on him or something like that and actually see what he does. Um, but judging by what he brings back home, I'd say it's mostly mice and rabbits. Um, interestingly enough, um, the, our driveway uh, sort of comes up through here, and if we drive up that, we'll quite often see rabbits along this section, right? The moment we get above where the dogs are, there's no rabbits. 
all right? So he is a predator. He is, you know, cleaning up uh, all those lovely things like rabbits and mice. Yeah. There we go. <laughs>